What this research brings to us is a very enlightening insight into a mechanism of action in which this component from green tea, otherwise known as epigallocatechin 3 galli otherwise commonly known as EGCG, helps in basically stabilize a very promising protein which is known to basically help uh, in basically combating 50% of the cancers, otherwise known as P53. Now, in this chart the roundabout you see, you see a nefarious component otherwise known as MDM2. In MDM2, what that does is that causes the degradation of P53 before it even gets a strong chance in which to help combat or alleviate many of the elements of which we speak. And where EGCG comes in, otherwise epigallocatechin 3 gallate, is it helps preserve that P53. It's a little complex, but let's get into the research, and I'm sure it'll all begin to make sense quite rapidly. So, in the research titled, Green Tea Compound AIDS P53, Guardian of the Genome and Tumor Suppressor. An antioxidant found in green tea may increase levels of P53, a natural anti-cancer protein known as the guardian of the genome, for its ability to repair DNA damage or destroy cancerous cells. Published in the Nature's Communication, a study of the direct interaction between P53 and the green tea compound, epigallocatechin, three actually, but epigallocatechin gallic, I'm not going to correct it, points to a new target for cancer discovery. As we go into the study itself, it's important first to recognize the interaction and how important P53 is before you get a solid appreciation to how the benefit of green tea helps in stabilizing this protein. To proceed as follows, both P53 and EGCG molecules are extremely interesting. Quoting, mutations in P53 are found in over 50% of human cancer. While EGCG is the major antioxidant, as again, quoted, major antioxidant, the green tea, a popular beverage worldwide, did that be said. Quoting, now we find there is a previously unknown direct interaction between the two, which points to a new path for developing anti-cancer drugs that mimic the effect of green tea. Just reading the research. To proceed, our work, quoting, helps to explain how EGCG is able to boost P, as in Paul, 53's anti-cancer activity, opening the door to developing drugs with EGC-like, EGCG-like compounds. I know what you're thinking, but again, just ready to throw the research as we proceed forward. The team found, Wang's team found, the interaction between EGCG and P53 preserves the protein from degradation. Typically, after we reduce within the body, P53 is quickly degraded when the N-terminal domain interacts with the protein called, as we brought up from the beginning, remember the chart or graph, MDM2. This regular cycle of production and degradation holds P53 levels at a low constant. Now enter green tea. Both EGCG and MDM2 bind at the same place on the P53, the N terminal domain. So EGCG competes with MDM2, kind of like trying to get the seats on a bus. When EGCG binds with P53, the protein is not being degraded through MDM2, kind of like a preservative, in a very simplistic what term. Uh, with the, they're not degraded through the MDM2. So the level of P53, P53 will increase with the direct interaction with EGCG. And that means there is more P53 for anti-cancer function. This is very important for the interaction. So basically what's been happening is MDM2 naturally comes and says, oh, look, there's P53. Let's take it out. But now, and the body is constantly producing P53, but it cannot produce enough of this fast enough. So here comes EGCG. EGCG working as a shield, component, preservative, whatever you want to call it, protector, guardian of the genome, or guardian of the guardian of the genome. And it helps say, hey, you know what? MDM2, no seats on this bus for you. We're riding this thing out. Hence, epigallocatechin 3 galli. Now let's go into the research itself because this is going to give you an example more so of its true impact on a variety of, variety of conditions. So let's look right into the full study. Of course, the link will be there for, links will be there for you as well. 
Diet-based cancer prevention therapy have received considerable attention in recent years. Green tea, a popular beverage consumed worldwide, has been reported to have inhibitory effects against various types of cancer, such as breast, lung, prostate, and colon. Most of the chemopreventative effects of green tea on cancer are con- attributed to polyphenol compounds. That's why I said one more insight into interaction of green tea, many of the interactions of green tea, among which epi Gallocatechin 3 gallate EGCG, is the most important. EGCG accounts for 50 to 80% of the catechin in green tea. This is important, which I highlighted to you in case people are trying to draw a comparison. Now, keep in mind, this is really just going into the interaction, even though they do allude to other studies, which we're about to read right now. There is 200 to 300 milligrams of EGCG in a brewed cup. 240 milliliters of green tea. By drinking cups of green tea or taking an EGCG tablet, a serum concentration of 0.1 to 1 micromoles, I assume, EGCG can be achieved. The anti-cancer effect of EGCG has been demonstrated in epidemiological cell culture in animal studies and in clinical trials. I'm going to read you the next slide. Now, the next slide, again, they're quoted from another study. But... Again, the amount may seem excessive. However, keep in mind, this was done over 10 years. So think of it more as a safety analysis at the exact same time. A 10-year perspective study by Nakachi, in in my prior mispronouncing that, so please forgive me, reported a decreased risk of cancer for those consuming over 10 cups of green tea a day. I think if you're trying to draw a correlation, there's close to 16 cups in a gallon. So let's see. Compare with those consuming below three cups. So yeah, they're drinking close to about, uh, you know, a little over, you know, half a gallon, uh, basically, of green tea. And that may seem excessive, but keep in mind, think of it more as a toxicology study because you're looking at these individuals drinking that much, 10 cups or more over 10 years, and still having very promising results. All right. The anti-cancer effect of EGCG has been demonstrated at DOM compared with those consuming below three cups. Recently, they found, the researchers found that green tea extract reduced the recurrence rate of colorectal adenomas by 44.2% in randomized clinical trials in Korea. In vitro, EGCG was shown to promote cell growth, arrest, induce apoptosis, in a variety of human cancer cell lines, including prostate carcinoma cells, epidermoid carcinoma cells, bladder cancer cells, and colon cancer cells. In vivo, or vitro, like a test tube or a petri dish, in vivo, a living organism. In vivo, oral intravenous administration of green tea or purified EGCG in mice inhibited angiogenesis and restrained solid tumor growth and so on and so forth. Again, this research is just astounding in its length, in basically into the mechanism of action in a myriad of different ailments. So we could read through this research, I mean, literally line by line, and it is just, again, fascinating, astounding, and enlightening, but leading to more and more credence of the incredible, incredible benefits of such a simple, simple food that has been consumed for an untold matter of time. Again, the main component of that is EGCG, as we said in the study, 2 to 300 milligrams of epigallocatechin, just now I just like saying it, 3-gallate, in about 240 milliliters, being a cup of brewed green tea coffee. Green tea coffee, no green tea, please forgive me. Well, you can consider it as a coffee alternative or tea. Uh, and so that gives you a good comparison either by drinking or consumption through a capsule or a tablet or supplement, I should say. But again, Incredible promise. Now when someone says, well, we're not certain how green tea works or how it works in reference to basically helping combat tumors or cancers or whatever it is, now you could say, yeah, now I got an idea. Because what happens is the EGCG basically protects this P53 guardian of the genome uh, from being degraded faster by this other protein, the nefarious MDM2. By keeping those P53 levels protected and basically boosted, it helps basically combat those other effects. So it's like the guardian of the guardian to help guard you. Again, Ralph Turchiano signing off. Hope this information is enlightening. The uh, 
Links will be there as always on the YouTube channel as well too for those that want to visit us on Saturday night or Sunday morning in reference to data analytics in reference to pandemic mitigation strategies and the weird, weird effect which happened in the first week of January in uh, multiple geographies, so on and so forth, as you can see here, uh, was just astounding as well. But focus today is on the green tea, the EGCG effect, its effect in protecting the P53 and keeping those P53 levels elevated and shielding it from the MDM2, as opposed to making sure there's no room for it to dock on a what, the end terminal? But yeah, you know what I mean. Again, gratitude. Thank you. Look forward to y'all once again very soon, and I'll catch you next time.